All right, for imaging of the facial bones, I'm going to do the waters first. So, and also this goes for sinuses as well, because many of your projections for facial bones apply to sinus. What you want to keep in mind is to be sure that for sinuses that your patient is upright. Because you do want to see the air fluid levels uh, within the sinuses. And if the patient is laying down, you're not going to be able to see that air fluid level unless you do like a dorsal decubitus. But try to have your patient upright if, if, if it is possible. All right, for the waters, I'm going to place the chin up on the chest board. And you lean the head back so that there's approximately uh, three quarters of an inch between the nose and the board. You do not want the nose touching the board because uh, the petrous ridges will not be projected down out of the way of the, of the maxillary sinuses. So you want to be able to see the maxillary bone with uh, the petrous ridge below the sinus. So just check your mid-sagittal line. Also, you can check if you want to use your protractor. Your orbital meatal line should form, should form a line of uh, 37 degrees with the board. So that's another way of checking it. You can also check your mental meatal line. That is usually pretty much perpendicular to the board. Okay, so this is our waters. Then we'll have our central ray. You want your central ray to be exiting out at the level of the acantheon. So I can go up just a little bit higher. Okay, this is the left side of the head. So I'm going to place my left, mar my left marker up here. Okay, I'm going to bring your chin down just a tad, okay? If you, if you have the head tilted too far back, then that's going to... Uh, foreshorten the orbits so you don't see them as well. Okay, so just check you only need about three quarters of an inch between the nose and the board. Okay, next I'm going to do the caldwell, which is the forehead and nose touching. We had this with the skull, forehead and nose touching. We're going to angle 15 degrees caudal. Central ray is going to exit at the level of the nasion. And every time you angle your tube, be sure to adjust your bucky. Just want to make sure that is in the center. Okay. And adjust, make sure the mid sagittal is lined up. Again, mark correct side of the body. This is the left side, so we're going to put a left marker. Whenever there's an injury to a particular side, with uh, especially when we get into the lateral, you want to place the affected side to the board because it, you'll see better detail to that side. For sinuses, instead of using the 15 degree angle with the tube, you can also do the Caldwell method with bringing the forehead off of the board and just having the nose touching. In your axial projection, instead of having the 15 degree tube angle, you're going to have the 15 degree tilt of the head. Okay, and you're accomplishing the same thing. Still considered a PA axial and you know, regarding sinuses, it's recommended that it be done this way because you get a cleaner air fluid level if there is fluid within the sinus. Some chest boards tilt forward, and if that's the case, I would be able to tilt the chest board to meet the forehead at this point, and it would be at a 15 degree angle. Okay. All right, I'm going to do the right lateral. Just position your head as if you're doing a lateral skull. 
just check your inner pupillary line, make sure that it's going perpendicular. Check your mid sagittal line and make sure that it is horizontal. Okay, the right side of her face is up against there, so I'm going to put the right marker. The central ray will be hitting perpendicular. Now, for the lateral, for the facial bones, your central ray is going to come halfway between the outer canthus and the EAM. Okay, if we were doing a lateral for sinuses, the central ray is going to come about an inch behind the outer canthus. It's just a slight, slight change in positioning. Either one, you can collimate to the face. You do not need this posterior portion of the skull. Usually if you have the light field going beyond the EAM, you'll have it good enough because typically your cella tersica is going to be in this area right here. So the sphenoid is the most posterior sinus and that's right below the cella tersica. Okay, so you can collimate for your sinus and facial. Don't worry about this back portion of the head. Okay, next I'm going to turn Sabrina around. Okay, kind of scoot your chair out from the board a little bit. We're going to do the S and B. And you have a patient put the vertex of the head in the middle of the board. Okay, make sure, double check, make sure that the mid sagittal line is going perpendicular. I've got my right marker here indicating the right side of the head. The central ray, I'm going to make a little adjustment here. You want to double check your mid-sagittal because you'll see the central ray going up right up underneath the chin there. But whenever you're doing sinuses, SMV for the sinuses, the central ray is going to cut across till it's about three quarters of an inch in front of the EAM. If you're doing the SMV for zygomatic arches, you can bring that just a little bit higher to a point where it's about an inch below the outer canthus. Again, both of those positions are very similar. And then you just collimate. And you can see, usually on the shadow on the board, you can see if, if you were to touch the cheek you can see a nice little shadow of your finger touching the outer edge of the cheek. If it looks like your finger sinking into the cheek, then you need to change your head a little bit because it should look like your finger is just brushing up against the cheek. Um, when your image comes out and say only one arch visualized, you know, we need both arches. We need to see both arches. So. We'll pretend that the left arch visualized, but the right did not. So you can do another method just to get that right to visualize. And I'm going to turn her head to the right just slightly, and it's estimated about 15 degrees. What that does, it throws out this arch so that it will be seen. I'm going to recenter her. I'm just going to pull you towards me a little bit. And see, this is the tangential, where the central ray is cutting across and it's just hitting this one side. So I, I can collimate a little bit tighter because we're only going for the one side. 